dude. Oh, man. Dude, so far this has been like the best. You guys are bam 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 bam. I know, I felt bad. Well, give him the guns. Gotta give him the guns. We're done. We're done. Give him the guns, guys. Bam. Uh, we gotta give him the guns, guys. Bam. So right. peace. Thanks, guns. Logan. Guns. Boom. Fist. Boom. Gun. And uh, let's give him the guns real quick. Bam, bam, bam. Logan. The guns. Logan. Logan. Oh, give him the guns, you loser. I'm non-violent. <laughs> I'm pacifist. I will bazooka your ass. <laughs>Legendary Smith. Yeah. Joel. Excited. Good to have you here, man. Good to this be here. super awesome. Thanks, man. Here. Thanks for coming on. You guys have been talking about this for a while, so it's awesome. We've to... actually been probably talking about it for uh, seven years. Since like, we literally went to Barsby together. Literally yeah. went to Barsby. Yeah. Overall, the that's whole been a idea. long time now. You guys grew out it for seven years. No, but we was it was like five years ago. <laughs> five years oh, okay. ago. 20 and that would be like us and Greg 10 talking yeah, fair about enough. a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always a good time. Yep. Because whoever time. doesn't know, Smith is a legend in the Barsby community. <laughs> in case you didn't know. In case you didn't know. I, didn't, I don't legend. think I even knew. Yeah. <laughs> in, the whole, in the whole Harewood community, truly. Because uh, what I wanted to talk to you most today is uh, basically that artificial turf field that kind of just sprung up in Harewood out of nowhere. Yeah. Because for a lot of us, we weren't really aware why it's there or why it came up or what well, came it, to be. It, it literally sprang from nowhere because when we started the Cross Academy, we, we were practicing on a traditional school district field, mm -hmm. right? We stopped practices because rabbits were popping up, right? Yeah, um, so my, makes sense. I had holes that were up to my ankles, like oh, up wow. to my knees, right? It was, yeah, it was that, awesome. that field in particular was always yeah, really bad. Absolutely the, the worst. Really bad field. I know field. Coach Stevenson with football there was just, just hated it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think, I mean, I think our program existing playing lacrosse yeah. kind of helped it right might that's have been, what i thought might have been the impetus to kind of get it together mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it was here's the plans right and they started construction in the summer and it was ready in i think it was like early october of the next year like yeah. it just it just happened it was so, amazing so how fast. it's, a, it's yeah. awesome feel. because i was doing some traveling for work at the time and it was like whenever i come to nanaimo it's like a new thing is being built a new things being built yeah. oh my god so much what so is yeah. that beautiful yeah. turf field by the i'm gonna go Jealous. check that out like this yeah. is amazing never, why didn't we have this never oh did my you goodness. think something would be built for behind the school NDSS. district yes. and indy that coming group. right down the road yeah. going to barsby and then indy is always right there we're just in that community all the time we always want something cool totally. they, they've yeah. always been they made that uh whole uh, skate park the whole uh lacrosse box yeah that bar yeah. feed those yeah. are wicked it's impressive what's going it on it is impressive it is we thought it was going right to be now. um like a like an outdoor adult like uh workout zone yeah, would be okay. one area and they're going to have the cross box but they made two lacrosse boxes i was like what is i've little, heard they're putting a little in overkill a, or there was talk of putting in like a bmx park there like they a, have a, a mountain, like a mountain bike mountain track park. they do oh, have that oh, they've okay. had that for a while okay. yeah i thought they were gonna do a few other things but now there's two lacrosse boxes yeah. i use it to go skateboarding so that's good enough totally and rollerblading if you need to do that yeah but there's just stuff popping up all over the place and when that came up i was very it's cool that you know the nine was always expanding north Right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool that they're putting money into the South, the South community. Yes. Right? NDSS, Harewood, Barsby. Like, it's awesome that we're getting stuff mm -hmm. in our town. When yeah. I moved out of that neighborhood, I was sad. And moving back in here next week, going to Dana's, very excited. Can't be yeah. happier to go back well, to the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, well, the family we moved out of, we were in Rutherford area for years. Yeah, I was curious because we used to live right next to each other yeah, pretty yeah, much. And yeah. I was wondering if you've moved away, so. Yeah, yeah well, you came and, and did a bunch of yard work for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> good times, yeah, good that was a good time. Yeah, Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for having no, me. No, yeah, we, we just live up um, up 7th Street, turns in Harewood Mines Road. Mm. So I'm two minutes You're in the, the heart, heart, man. Oh, in the heart of Harewood. Well, we at the uh, top, other side yeah. of 7th Street. Oh, okay. Our yeah. railway, that's where Dana lives. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've lived in Nanaimo for a really long time. I lived in the North End pretty much growing up all my life when I moved to Harewood and I started living there for a while I just got such a strong sense of community yes do you kind of feel the same way yeah. opposed to the North End oh totally yeah um, uh, born and raised in Imo. Mm -hmm. I kind of lived all over the place but went to high school at Barsby uh, lived in Cinnabar right yeah um, taught at Barsby the, the community that, that is in this South End is just, it's it's off the charts. Yeah, it's, right? it's, it's and, and special. Working at a bunch of high schools in town, it's it's a different feel when, you're, you when, you're, in, when you're in Barsby, when you're in, say, ND to, say, say a Dover Bay, right? Mm. It's, it's have you, just have you worked in Dover too? Uh, I haven't had a contract there, but yeah, I've, I've, there. I've worked at every, yeah, every high school. Every in, high school? Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, West Army knife. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you hear about um, Swiss Army knife related? 
Uh, how many things were you teaching? That's you, a smooth you transition. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. How, how many classes were you teaching? Like social studies and gym? Um, right now, I got. I, I can't argue. I got the best job in, in the world. Just lacrosse. I think. Uh, no, I teach two blocks of lacrosse <laughs> and then two blocks of socials 10. Right That's now. sweet. That's and sweet. And first semester, I had a, a spare because you get a spare if you're full time. Um, a PE8 and two blocks of lacrosse. That's super exciting. So I get paid to coach lacrosse, travel, every day. Yeah. What? It's not bad. It's what, so awesome. When it's you're going bad. through like this whole university course and you're picturing at your life and, and how things are going to change for you, did you ever think it would be this no, sweet? No, no. I never thought it would be this good. Like, I figured I'd be a socials PE teacher. Yeah. Right? Wow. That's and cool. having, a, having a good time doing that, but I never thought in a million years we'd be... We'd be coaching lacrosse, going going to Vegas, going to Palm Springs. Yeah, right? your guys' trips go, are crazy. Went to, to Oregon. Trip. Yeah, you guys are yeah. always going down south. We, we did an Atlanta trip last year. What's that for? Why is, is there no other Canadian teams or what? No, there's there there is like there's a couple high schools in Victoria mm -hmm. that, that exist. There's high schools in Vancouver that kind of have teams, but they're the whole impetus for us is to promote kids for post secondary. Right? Okay, so cool. we got to go travel. We got to go play in tournaments where scouts are there to get kids looked at mm. for the the chance. That, that's so if, cool. if really they cool. want it to get. To that's get amazing. Scholarships. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. wicked. Yeah. That's the way. To, that's it's, super cool. It's pretty awesome. Just to get noticed yeah. and get more eyes on them and yeah. to make them look yeah. as good as possible. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 playing that's playing really cool. in BC, that's great, right? But mm. they they need that they need that exposure if if they want it to to go pursue something. Do you guys do any fundraisers? Oh yeah, we got all kinds of yeah. Uh, yeah, we've we've done because uh, it must cost a lot. Oh, it does. We yeah, have a bunch lots of bottle drives, beer and burgers. We do sponsorships. We got a big banner that we put up at all our home games. Mm. Not that we've had too many this year with weather and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's another story. Um, yeah, we got sponsors that that pay that's right sweet. for tent sponsorships. And that's quick. Sponsors. That's quick. That must yeah. have happened too. Yeah. How long have you been doing the program for? Uh, this is year four. Year this four year already. Four. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. um, just flying by. So the transition, like when you were at bars and you were substituting and stuff and yeah. we, you all had, we were all behind you. We loved you. And, um, what happened? Like you just went to ND, you got, you got, they signed a contract with you and then you were like, uh, I got this across idea. Yeah, they, Let's do it. I was, yeah, I was teaching at Barsby. Um, and there was a posting came out for a block of social studies, a block of dance. And a block and of you were lacrosse. all over it. So yeah. I saw the okay. lacrosse, saw the socials, saw the dance. It was like, well, two or three ain't bad. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so, so they, I got the job, and it was just a, it was a PE class with a lacrosse focus. Okay, cool. And then once I was in it, it was like, well, hey, if there's enough kids in town, let's start let's start seeing if we can build it into something else. And then people One, just agreed with you, and then they went and ran with yeah, it, and they yeah, built the yeah. Thing. I did all did a lot of research and put things together, and community hopped on board and, and supported it, which is huge. Yeah, that's amazing. Couldn't, couldn't have done it without community. Of course. And then present it to the the board um, and they thankfully said yes and then I thankfully got the job and and, and here we are yeah right that's, that's amazing. really incredible it's kind of pretty inspiring because you just don't see a lot of things get like just happening that quick and built yeah. and boom and yeah. here it is now you're yeah. already in year four you're, yeah which is crazy yeah well I mean part of it was one I was struggling to get full-time mm. right seven at Barsby getting the odd jobs here yeah. there, which is great but it was like I need to create something that, mm. that I love to do, mm -hmm. right? That I could kind of build and grow, but then got me a permanent job. Yeah. Right. So totally. it's kind of a kind of a win win. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolute win win. I, I'm sorry for the rapid fire, but I'm just loving this. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Oh, good. Um, yeah. I'm under we, pressure. We, we <laughs> love you. Be, before we the podcast, <laughs> we were just talking about uh, 20 years old. You're like going to university. You're working full time. You're yeah. living on your own. You're having kids. You're a father. You you have a lot of commitments in your life. Yeah. Now you have this teaching career and lacrosse academy career. Yeah. You you gotta have some philosophies to be pushing this hard, man. Because this is some serious and in, seriously inspiring stuff for myself. Oh. For I know Strats yeah. is just loving this. Right I know now. we both grew up in a, a a hardcore coach Stevenson football curriculum. Yeah. And he had oh, lots absolutely. of philosophies yeah. and stuff that we would always oh. just feeding on right yeah. yeah i'm sure there's the same i love, I love, I love coach philosophies yeah right? yeah you, talk, you love them you, the talk, you talk to coach for 20 minutes he talks military history for about 19 and a half roman and history and then for throws 10. throws some like knowledge bomb on you and just walks out yeah and right? it's just like my guy. whole world he's, a, he's another level <laughs> yeah. of human man he's yeah. he's a genius on another oh, he scale he's yeah. awesome yeah. He um, i mean I, I don't when you're in something and you want to do something you just figure it out right and that's that's kind of that's a lot of what we talk about in lacrosse is just right we're together we're a family you got people to support you and at the end of the day it's a, it's how you deal with the adversity in your life whether you choose it 
mm-hmm. right? Or whether it's kind of forced upon you, and mm-hmm. you just you just got to put your head down and, and figure out where you want to be, and and do whatever it takes to get there. Yeah, right. It might be hard, right? But it's gonna suck. Yeah, once in a while, it's not gonna be easy. But mm-hmm. at some point, you just got to bury your head in the sand and, and go get it. Yeah, and to hell with whoever's getting in your way, mm-hmm. right? Or whatever those obstacles are that yeah. are, that are getting in your way. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, that's I don't know if it's very philosophic, but no, it's, well, it's oh, no. also very it's, simple. It's, yeah, it's, and it's yeah. something that basically everybody should learn and will learn at yeah. some point. Yeah. But a lot of kids don't, yeah. depending on where they come from, their family lives. And yeah. that's why I think yeah. sports are really important. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, they, when it goes up to the professional level, it gets a little bit scary. But I think at these level for kids, it is really important because they learn so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's what it is. Like we're At the end of the day, if we're creating lacrosse players, that's not really what we're doing. Yeah. At, foot, at, at bars, we're not really worried about creating the next you know, great football player, no. right? It's, we're creating individuals, young men, young women who are going to the community and are going to be successful mm-hmm. because they've been taught to work hard, because yeah. they've battled through adversity, Absolutely. Because, yeah. because they have people there that are going to pick them up and, and move them forward. Absolutely. Yeah, right? there's leadership so, skills, hard lead, work ethic. All about leadership. Yeah. yeah there's so many it. things that yeah. are applicable to that. Like whenever, whenever I was doing hiring candidates, it'd always be like, who's played sports? Because these yeah. guys have regiment. They're used yeah. to committing to 6 a.m. practices. Yeah. They're yeah. used to Absolutely. dealing with adversity and taking the responsibility of having to work through whatever the thing yeah. is. Yeah. And we were just talking with another friend of ours and, uh, you know, he, he was kind of joking around about like, no one cares about your feelings. No one cares about how you feel when you're in the machine of, of the world, so to speak. Yeah. I think yeah. so sports and, and, you know, what you guys are showing in your program really teaches people how to deal with that kind of stuff yeah. as they Absolutely. transition from high school to adult. Because that's a pretty big jump. And, that's, and oh, we're is. talking about things that happen fast in life. That happens fast oh, in life, yeah. you know? Yeah, blink of an eye and all of a sudden you, you graduated, you waited all this time. Right, mm-hmm. when you're done, and then what? Right now, you got to start making decisions for you. Yeah, that's the scariest right. transition for can, people. Can you do it? Right, and you're gonna you're gonna make wrong decisions. It's yeah, tons of them. Right, tons of them. Make them all the time. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Happens, right. You, you are just, a human being. You're, you're a human being. Yeah, and then how, how are you gonna how are you gonna figure it out and learn from it? Yeah, right? and you, you start that whether you're you're in a club, you're in a team, you're in a whatever whatever it is that's organized. Do something that you together. love. Yeah, and yeah. that's what you did. Yeah, start that yeah. program. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. That's what a coach always says that. Right, do what you love, and doors will open. Right. Absolutely. You do something you're passionate about. Doesn't matter if it's this podcast, if it if it if it's Sound business, like if it's if it's sports, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Right. Do something you love to do, and the world's your oyster. Mm-hmm. Which couldn't is, agree which more. Is awesome. yeah. Couldn't agree more. That's what we're trying to do. Love it. We're yeah. just doing Love awesome it. stuff. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, this is what I wanted to talk about. That transition, high school to college. Yeah. And I know you have some kids. You have. Are they both? How old are they both? Uh, daughter's seventeen, graduating. Wow. In, in DSS this year. And then is Nate and also going? Nate graduated? is at ND, and he's fourteen in or, grade in grade now. Both old. Damn. Yeah. Um. So yeah. your daughter's going yeah. into post secondary. She's so going into post secondary. Yes, what does sir. she want to do? Do you know what she wants to? Do? She talk about it. Uh. Switches. She for the longest time she wanted to be a nurse. But yeah. Now she's kind of thinking no. She wants to go into kinesi- kinesiology. That's how it was like, all through high school. Teaching. For me. She's a, she's she's figuring it out. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Through yeah. high school, I never yeah. knew what I wanted to do, and that's yeah. when I never went to I never went to university at all. Yeah. I I don't know if I ever will. I think if, if there is a time, it might be when I'm like in my thirties. Yeah. Because it's something that I just I see a lot of people wasting a lot of time and money, mm-hmm. especially like my uh, one of my roommates went to like did three different programs and restarted she was like so much money in debt never want to do anything like that so, so, it's, so it's really scary totally. i understand how it could scare some people totally and is. you really just what i want to do is just find out what i love first and then maybe get into school get in. down the road. i mean once i learn get a little portfolio and some skills in that field totally i mean education's i don't it's tough. I, don't, I don't think it's ever wasted but mm-hmm. if you're really not sure what you want to do yeah there, there's there's lots of benefit to just working Traveling, or exploring, traveling. right? Experiencing, totally. Because right? it's those experiences that get you to figure out what you what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's a different. It's a non traditional education. Is what those experiences absolutely. truly are. Yeah, you yeah, know, I've yeah. always I've always found that you know what I've and, and I've never went to any post secondary. Oh, uh, very much valued my time in high school. Uh, it taught me a lot of things. But my best growing experiences have been dealing with adversity in life because totally. yeah. you get it from all sort of yeah. facets. And like I said, that's a different classroom. Yeah, right? that's it's a different, different type, classroom. Different type of education. Yes. Yeah, real life is the is the most in your face realistic education you're ever going to get. Yeah, it's not a controlled right. environment, sort yeah. of, so to speak, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of people just don't get a lot of time in that life class. 
Yeah. They really no don't. time. There's a lot of people class. that don't get any time in that life class. Yeah. And I know me and Bruce had some time in life class before yeah. our school even started. Yeah. But it's it's scary out there for some people who are just really sheltered, it don't is. know what they want to do. Yeah. It's it's a uh, it's tough. This generation coming up, I'm a little I'm, I, I don't I'm not worried about. But it's like, what is going to happen in the next 15 years? Uh, it be it be in the class. I'm I'm. I'll take it for that. I'm, I'm a little worried. <laughs> You're a little worried too. Yeah. Okay, no, that's yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. I think the school, the way the school systems have been set up in the past, and how everybody's in debt. Yeah, I think school yeah. post secondary is this going to look a lot. Different well, I mean, in ten years. If you're talking financially, it's scary to think what, like, just small town in Imo, right? What a what a what a Absolutely. house costs, right? Yeah. To, to yeah. Whether you're renting or buying, right? Yeah. And how you're supposed supposed to juggle that with high, uh, sort of in, increasing costs of education, housing, everything. Yeah. Everything. Right? Yeah. Like, how, how are you going to balance that? Gas. So, yeah, that's yeah. Gas. I, dr- I deliver yeah. pizza, people. <laughs> Gas is expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I yeah. once had a, a boss who is, you know, he's teaching a lot of ideals. And one of them is, you know, middle class is going to erode into this, you know, middle class is soon going to be $120,000 a year income. With the way that these, yeah. like, the, when you consider what a middle class person is, it's a homeowner. It's yeah. someone that owns a small bit of yeah. property and yeah. can definitely have no problem affording their life their car and so yeah. on yeah. but when you realistically think about what these things are costing nowadays totally. yeah. you can't tell me that a middle class is sixty five thousand dollars a year no. anymore no. Absolutely. You, you absolutely can't say that so no, um yeah i mean you've had my twitter account so you know i had yeah. some uh, over the last couple of years i've had some uh, opinions about middle class and stuff and that was kind of <laughs> shadowed on to me by other people and i've digested that and and, and taken away for what I want, but that's a, it's a real thing for sure. And it it's, is. uh, it and, is. and now where it kind of scares me, it scares me in one place, but it also opens up new doors and it opens up doors for people, uh, to, to be closer together. You know, I find, mm-hmm. I live in the mainland right now. I see a lot of Eastern cultures and I see a lot of families bungled up in one house. And I think that's something that we all used to have. Mm-hmm. And we've kind of worked ourselves into this comfort where we want individualism and we want everything for ourselves mm-hmm. kind of deal. Yeah. And I think, you know, for four friends getting in a house and learning and growing together, I think that's a really special thing or even four strangers. I think that's mm-hmm. uh, there's a value in that that we might not have a choice for it, but it's definitely it's mm-hmm. good to have. Well, it could be a means to an end, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're the stranger thing. That's brave. I don't, I don't know if I have the, yeah. the, the, the cojones to do that. Bruce has done that right? multiple times. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So at my old job, uh, you know, it was essentially you're, we're doing door-to-door sales, traveling, and we do uh, company leases on houses. Yeah, okay. And, you know, I was a location manager, so it was like you get an email of who's, who's moving in, and some people are just there gems, go. really good yeah. people, and some of the best friends I've, I've traveled the world with, That's honestly. Awesome. Yeah. Some people are people that can't put away a dish, you, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're like yeah. given this responsibility of basically slave. being a parent and yeah. facilitating not only yeah. this person in their career, yeah. but also their home life because totally. it's a constant totally. work environment. Totally. So, But I mean, depending on how, obviously it's 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 individual to, to who you are, mm-hmm. right? And everyone's going to deal with that differently, but it, say you can still learn from that, mm-hmm. right? You're still taking great opportunities to, to kind of move forward see who you are mm-hmm. right and then and and take that and, and go forward with it mm-hmm. right which is huge mm-hmm. um yeah i mean i, I love it I, I yeah follow you on the on twitter and all that and kind of <laughs> uh, i've seen lots of hey looking for a roommate i'm like what yeah right? it's always crazy. looking for a roommate right? just, just the 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 comfort that you have and who you are Mm-hmm. Right and being able to just put yourself out there to the world, right, and be who you are—that's that's awesome. Thanks, Dad. Right? And I, I've seen that on, on your social media, right, and it's it's that's fantastic. Yeah, right? that, that means a lot because that's uh, for me. That's really what I try and represent is just a genuine. Because yeah. like we're yeah. constantly sold, the, and I know it's not like you don't get genuine all the time, even oh, with yeah. me. But yeah. like we're constantly sold a front on media. Yeah. And it's it's really hard for a lot of people to digest being sold this thing of like who is Ryan Stratton? What is he this creator that goes off and makes videos all the time and going off and having fun experiences? Or yeah. is he someone that you know has an occasional bad day like every other seven billionth? Yeah, like there. every other seven billionth. Yeah, like every other seven billionth person on the planet. Joel, and I think yeah. uh, I think I, like I see media as a tool, and like any tools, you yeah. can use it the wrong way. Yeah. Oh, totally. You yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Um, which kind of brings me, sorry, I'm just on a tangent about myself here. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be It's all about Bruce right now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm going to be off the Twitter. 
Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I read a book that Strats recommended to me. It's a social psychology book Good, oh, okay. called uh, Reclaiming Conversation. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it's just uh, so in transition to reading the book, I deleted some apps off my phone and I'm kind of reevaluating how I want to do it. But yeah. Twitter is going to be one of them that is just out. And I'm, That's cool. I'm noticing a lot of things. The biggest thing with uh, the cell phone and not having it is I've noticed a, a big improvement in memory. Just because oh, okay. there's so much yeah. less your input you're taking in as far as input goes, and you just it, yeah. the thing yeah. seems like it just gets full up with this nonsense. That half, and, that half second flip, mm -hmm. right? You're trying to yeah. take all this stuff in. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's scary being in a class talking about conversation. People don't know how to do this. Right. Yes. That's very, you nailed that's, that. That's kids, what the whole book's about. Yeah. Now. A lot of kids don't know how to. And that's why I wanted to start right? this is yeah. because I want to get better at this. Yeah. And this is important. And yeah. this is like, you get way more done than through a group chat. Totally. Like I, I haven't seen you in a couple of years, right? You came and did some filming early in the year with the class, Yeah, that was right? fun. But three grown people that can sit down and haven't seen each other and can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen crazy. now. Right? It, and you saying that is crazy too. Boy, three minutes in, I'm someone's grabbing a phone right there's mm -hmm. there's something totally. to check and it's it's just it's it's scary because that that prevalence of media right and that just instant, it's the machine it's world is knowledge. creeping into our, right. all of our lives yeah oh yeah what me and bruce yeah. have been talking about recently yesterday we went and saw our good friend logan we've been visiting he's been friends. on the podcast a couple times okay. podcast, yeah. genius yeah. guy gets to have a lot of thoughts but he was talking about how there's the machine world the corporate world the business world when you're working Nobody gives a crap about your feelings yet. Like nobody cares. It's just about the bottom dollar, yeah. right? The cog. But when the it's cog a, just goes. Yeah, it just yeah. goes. Yeah, and you can't stop it. But where you can stop and slow things down is when you can find a group of friends that you love. Mm -hmm. You can go, and that's the real world. You can actually mm -hmm. people actually care about your feelings and they totally. want to listen to you. Totally. And and that feels good. Just being heard feels good. Totally. And you don't get that in the machine world because you no. can say a bunch of shit even though you're right. Like why is there no staff here? Like and <laughs> what the hell is going on? Yeah. I'm the only guy. It's Friday night. And I got to deliver all these pizzas. Yeah. You, you got to do it. I got to do you it. Got to do my it. My God, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Nobody, and nobody you gotta, cares. You got to earn your money. Yeah. yeah. But then I yeah. come here and I'm like, guys, Papa John's is just ridiculous. And they're like. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. It's rough out there. Uh, at least that feels yeah, good. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, you get, you get some gratification, right? Yes. You, you get people who are not justifying, but they're they're paying some credence to what you're feeling. Yes. Right? Yeah. Hum and they can relate. Are being, people are being humans, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, that's humanity, right? Well, Coming a lot of people are Just on a, on a simple scale. I uh, right. A lot of people are starting humans on the machine world. Right? <laughs> yeah. Shots, are you talking are about the humans. lizard people that are in our society? Not lizard people, just uncompassionate <laughs> people. Deep down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just uncompassionate people. I don't, I'm not on Facebook a lot, but Jen spends a lot of time on Facebook just around, and I'm like, Jen, what's going on there? And I just creep up, and she's like, just uncompassionate people. And I just see the craziest stuff on, online. Yeah. And it's just, well, people, uh, people are brave. People are losing it. People are brave when they're online. They can say whatever they want, right? There's no consequence because it's not the real world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's this outside yeah. entity, right? Yeah. Or the machine, as you're kind of talking about. Yeah. The machine. Uh, another yeah. thing in the book is like, uh, you know, so much of our communication is our nonverbals, our, our mm -hmm. tonality, our posture, our eye contact. And when you say mm -hmm. something, maybe mm -hmm. like, giving your opinion on something on Facebook, even with good intent, like you don't see how it's making the other person yeah. feel. Yeah. And you could yeah. write this two paragraph, well, two sentences in, you're like breaking their heart. Yeah. And you could yeah. like, if you were saying this to their face, you could see them like wincing in pain. And yeah. you, you, might, you mm. literally would like, you'd be like, you'd well, stop. I'm not saying yeah. this to hurt you. Like, I just want to give my opinion. But if I noticed I was hurting you, I wouldn't be yeah. saying it. Totally. Right. Yeah. So totally. that's yeah. a huge thing. And like uh, what, what they go into that book, they especially go into this, this female author is super worried about children do so many blind studies out of the high schools and stuff. And I mean, I wonder, like, uh, I won't make you get too far into it, but like bullying through the social evolution of change and like oh, yeah. Yeah. extremes, man. Yeah. Because I remember yeah. when I go into school, I've heard of some just extreme cases because yeah. you wouldn't confront someone face to face and say X, Y, and Z because it's fucking me. Well, I mean, <laughs> anybody can be a bully. Now. Yeah. You don't have to be the big, the big kid. Mm -hmm. and you don't have to be the, whatever the, the bully used to be. Archetype. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because, because it's so easy now. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's vicious. And as soon as you bully or send something out on a Instagram or a Snapchat, everybody knows instantly, right? And, and the hurt is, is compounded that much more because everyone's in on it, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it is in the school, so it is scary. And hard to, to contain see. because it, it's not actually, you can't touch yeah, it. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. And once it's out, it's out. Is there right. anything going on in schools like to prevent that? Like no phones in this classroom, put them away, like anything like that? Is anything going on? Yeah, like in my classroom, I just, I shame kids into putting, shame. putting their phones away. <laughs> nice. it, it's just, if, if we're teaching, it's teaching time and your phones aren't. 
Absolutely. Right? So, I mean, pr- teachers are pretty good, but in some are a little more lax than others. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it, it, in our high school, uh, it's surprisingly, there's, I don't want to say there's not as much as, maybe there's, maybe there's probably not as much bullying as you would think. Okay. I didn't would, think there was would, either when I was in high school, right? personally. Um, I mean, it, it, it still exists. I don't, yeah, I don't, for sure. I don't think it's ever going to go away. Yeah, no. Right? Even though it, it, it's a different medium now to bring it in mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's as 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 big as, a, as as you would think it is yeah uh it's same with fighting right like there's i've been teaching for what almost 10 years right mm-hmm. and i've maybe seen a handful of fights yeah right it's just not something that that is it's not something that's out there yeah, yeah I, I never really saw a fight yeah. but i always heard about bars being the place where you fight and there's turf wars and yada oh. yada yada yeah but it's just not like that anymore it's a new world for sure it is mm-hmm. yeah bar yeah bars be old oh, bars be right it's got this, this you went thing. there right yeah, i went there yeah, yeah and even now you talk to kids and oh bars be and they they think there's this this negative but no it's it's a it's a great school it's That's got the great teachers school. it's got great kids right it's mm. a great community it, right and bad stuff happens everywhere yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. That's such a right? huge takeaway for sure. Oh, yeah. it, it was hilarious yeah. for me because I transitioned from Dover Bay, the, mm-hmm. the nice North End school, from grade eight to grade nine to Barsby. Yeah, that's right. Well, I can tell yeah. you, Dover Bay, I was heavily bullied. Yeah, uh, I didn't have, um, I wasn't a part of a sports team there, so I didn't yeah. have that sense of camaraderie. But coming totally. to Barsby was like, and just the, there's no words to say how much of a life changer it yeah. was for me. Yeah. That's and awesome. I know I'm not alone in this. No. I know yeah. that. Anyone, like any person that has made that transition from, you know, it could even be one school to another school where they have that special yeah. kind of community, yeah. they've gone through the same yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a, yeah, that power of community, the power of camaraderie, t- sports, teams, whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, it, Barsby just sweats that out of them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and and drama and like other creative, yeah, and other creative drama and oh, yeah, yeah, groups yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, the drama program, everything. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what, as long as you're belonging to something. Mm-hmm. Right, and you got two or three, four, whatever it is, people who are with you doing yeah. the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right, like-minded people mm-hmm. striving for like-minded goals. You're, you're doing. You're in a good group. You're in a good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're a you're a pretty well-rounded guy these days, Smith. You got all the answers. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> depends who you ask. You're, you're but, pretty busy too. What do you uh, uh, What do you do in your spare time? Are you Are you getting Do you get after it? Do you have you spare out? time? You're looking pretty good. <laughs> so I have modicum of spare time here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, super busy with, with, with work and then lots of travel. Um, love reading books. Book guys. Uh, cool. Sweet. And Fiction, non Trying to get back, back in the books. Um, right now I'm big on, um, just Comic finished books? the, no, Don, Don Winslow. He's wrote this three part heard- trilogy on the war on drugs in, oh, cool. in, in, in <laughs> America, Mexico. And it's just, it's unreal. Um, Game of Thrones, all that stuff. I'm um, just getting into Game of Thrones. I just binged season four in like a day. Beautiful. That was awesome. That's, season five. That's dedicated. I like that. It was, it's good. Like that. Season four, yeah. th- all the first three seasons, I was like, this is kind of boring. Yeah. And then season four was like, bam. There you go. Here I am. Re- re- I, I want to touch on you reading into the war on drugs just really quick. I just listened to a podcast with a gentleman named Graham H- Hancock. Okay. He's like an archaeologist. He's basically like Indiana Jones. Love him. <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah, he, kind of guy. Yeah, right. Who, who is it, right? Yeah. Um, so he was uh, talking about, uh, they were talking about the war on uh, psychoactive states, essentially. And Joe Rogan was his podcast host. And he was like, you know, there's a big ro- war on consciousness. And he pointed out, well, it's not necessarily a war on consciousness because we still allow caffeine, yeah. alcohol, which, and, and many other things that prescription heavily, drugs. prescription drugs, many things that heavily impact our consciousness. So, you know, the war seems to be more on a consciousness that points at power structures. And we all kind of look at it and it's the same thing that we've all been echoing throughout the last 30 minutes here. And the real language is love. Yeah. The real language is community. It's not, it's not whatever the, the power structure is. And I just found, uh, I find with my experience in doing whatever the research on war on drugs is, that's kind of the, what they're trying to point you away to. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 going away from okay. We got to fight X, Y, Z, right, and, and get to get to the root of it, mm-hmm. right. And, and at the root of it is is probably what you're talking about is is that idea of love and trying to change people. You're not change people, but change situations from the ground up, mm-hmm. right. If that mm-hmm. makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you can if you can fight something there, then you're gonna have a lot more success than trying to fight some at the end of it where where the not the suffering is, but the 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 end result. Is negative, mm-hmm. so to speak. Fix the foundation. Fix and the foundation. Branch out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I exactly. get you. Yeah. 
That's a tough one in particular. The war on drugs in particular. I think I also listened to somebody, something, a book, somebody, a podcast. Nice. Who, and they talk. It was a DEA agent. Look them up, about guys. The more they, <laughs> the more they, uh, the more they fight the gangs or whatever. Say they eliminate a gang, that just makes a new power vacuum for two more gangs that come up and yeah. sell more drugs and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So that was like yeah. when I hear when I hear about all that stuff, it's just like losing battle. All the all the things that they when they put in like a new abortion law, which makes everybody in Alabama like prisoners. That's that's just like a thing yeah, where I feel like that's, that's a distraction, and which makes us all fight for that law, and it'll probably get embellished soon because yeah. I, I feel like it's unrealistic for that to just to exist in modern society now. For the you, next, you wonder, right? Yeah, some weird stuff goes. Some on. weird stuff's yeah, happening, yeah, yeah. but the, I usually I feel self. like it's just to get us distracted and fight amongst ourselves. Yeah, What's really. strange for me is how different the states is. Like you, so you have that abortion law literally three days before Denver, one city gets psilocybin decriminalized. That's true, and it's like you. You, you have these pop-ups that are just like, wow, what a progressive step for humanity. You know, like, take a breath, guys. Things are going good. Yeah. And well, then yeah. you just get smacked in the face well, like that. Yeah, it, sh- it shows you the independence of the states. The states. Yes. Yeah. And, right? and, and it feels it's not like... like there's a, there's a, there's a long... No, sir. No, it's not like <laughs> Canada passes law and it's coast to coast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? You got different different rules, different laws yeah. in, in Washington, Oregon, California. It, it's crazy. It feels right? like so every it, state it, is like a testing ground yeah. for lots of different yeah. shit. Yeah. Like so much. Like I can go like deep. Like when there's Michigan stuff, like when that, what happened in Michigan? The water? The Flint water Flint, crisis. Flint, 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 it's like yeah. in the water, they tested it like, well, what happens when we do this to the water? What happens when we make this law over here? What happens yeah. when we pass this in Denver? Yeah. It's like they just see what happens. Oregon, California, weed is legalized. So many different things, and like they're just—it's like a powder keg. They're testing things, see what'll work, see what'll stick. It is. Yeah. It's interesting what the states are doing sometimes. Like, but it's interesting what we're doing. The world is interesting, <laughs> and I just try to live every day to day. The world is interesting. I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured out what I want to talk to you about next, Mr. Smith. Here we go, Joel. Here we go. Um, so Russell Wilson's the highest paid quarterback making more money than Aaron Rodgers. Do you think that's cool? Or that do you think sh- that should never happen? What? You don't ever. think Russell Wilson deserved this? He deserves money, but not the most money not, ever. Not more money than Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is the most gifted quarterback to ever play. Done. Not saying he's the best. He's the most gifted quarterback. Skill wise, but can he do what Russell Wilson does? Russell Wilson's insane. He, you could say he's the most gifted. He does incredible things. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> this is just and awesome. he beats the and he beats Aaron Rodgers on a daily. Whoa! whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> In the playoffs, all the time. <laughs> I'm gonna respect you because this is your podcast. There is no chance Russell Wilson can hold a fiddle, to Aaron Rodgers. What? But he has Rodgers. Russell Wilson. He has it's done it. Not even I like how he prefaced that with, I'm going to respect you. <laughs> Your quarterback <laughs> fucking sucks. And I can say anything I want. No okay. offense. I honestly but. do think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the league. But uh, I think Russell Wilson Russell Wilson, every need, penny Russell Wilson needs all the help he can get to beat Aaron Rodgers. Remember that touchdown interception game? I remember it. We were there. I remember it. I was there. We talked in, about it in math class. In the end, <laughs> there we go. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> making, making memories in math class. I was there in the end zone, me and my buddy, Mr. Horncastle, losing our minds because the Packers are about to win. And then <laughs> they, they both catch the win. ball. There's a touchdown, there's an interception. And the entire crowd just turned on us, and we were like, "Oh ah! shit, we got to get out of here." That's so. That's but crazy. my point is, he needs all the help he can get to beat Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Doug, mono way, mono man to man, Aaron so Rodgers. I'm a little scared this season because uh, Doug Baldwin's gone, who is a fucking legend. That guy's awesome. Very sad. He's my favorite receiver. He's gone. Cam Chancellor's also gone now. Like, my other favorite player. Ball, I like Baldwin in fantasy. Terrible. But happens. He's like a really good second tier receiver. Plays with a chip on his shoulder. He does. He makes yeah. some he great does. catches. But he's like a second tier receiver. He's on. Yeah. The, he's not. Look at his size. Yeah. You know, he can't box everybody out. He does what no. he does. But, but he, he he's makes, good. He makes big plays. He makes big plays when he it does. counts. He's he's yeah. clutch. Yeah. But uh, we're missing him. Very sad. And uh, we got this new Metcliff receiver guy. I think he's oh, going to be DJ pretty, Met- Metcalf. Yeah. Do you know? I don't watch any college football. I just saw some of the, the combine. Yeah, he's, he's like huge. he was a freak at the combine. Yeah, he looks yeah. pretty badass. Yeah. So I'm yeah. pretty he, excited to see what he does this he's season. He's ginormous. Um, Absolutely. Massive. You opened up the conversation with starting like about the contract, and it's this four year, hundred and forty six million. Something yeah, yeah. Like that. So like and this is the qu- we have yeah. another five years. This, which this is, is a nice. question for both of you, and this is what uh, what I think the Patriots have been so successful is you have so many guys on the <laughs> roster true. taking these pay cuts to w- win football games. So I, yeah. I I personally think that contract puts Seattle out. 
Yeah, uh, it's, and these are the arguments that are made at these days, right? Uh, um, just and I just I say this because I honestly I, I I'm an objective Patriots fan. There are a lot of times where I look at the team, look at the roster, and I, I don't think they can do it this year. But they do. I, I know uh, year after year, and I be, I believe it's heavily due to this. You know, we don't have we don't do these superstar signings for yeah. you know like like uh, take a guy like Jamie Collins wanted. Von Miller money leads to Cleveland for three years. He's now re-signed on New England. Yeah. And it's like, how often do we need that story and need this team winning Super Bowls for other teams to get it? Yeah. So I'm wondering how you guys feel about your two teams because you do have these big contracts, you not so much. And like, uh, if that's going to be the new style that these franchises are adopting is signing these big players, like how, how do you build a, a – because you need a solid team. You I need do, to be deep. Uh, uh, Tom Brady, I think Tom Brady gets his money. But what the Patriots oh, yeah. do, what the Patriots do more, better than anybody, they draft better, right? The, the, they the draft Seahawks well. have, made, have made some terrible draft picks. They made some bad the, draft the picks. The Packers have made some terrible draft picks, mm-hmm. right? And, and the Patriots, yeah, they get these reclamation projects, but they get young guys in their prime, right? What the Seahawks did for we make some, we do the have Seahawks some did that picks. for two years. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Should have won two Super Bowls out of it. Yes, right. Yes. But, but the Patriots do that time and time and time again. Mm-hmm. They find gems in the sixth, seventh round that mm-hmm. come in and are starters and, and dominate. You're right? right. And then when they want more money, see you later. We'll find new guys. Yeah. Because they're so confident in their system mm-hmm. and they're so confident in the culture and just coming together that they they're they're way too successful, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Right? And, it? and the Packers, I mean, yeah, they got they got top end talent, and it's either their offense is kicking or their defense is is going, and yeah. it's never together, mm-hmm. yeah, ever. Because how did you like? Um, was it Mike McCarthy getting fired? <laughs> did you like Mike McCarthy? I I, I was a f- I approved him getting fired, just not when he got fired. They should have given him enough Earlier? respect to, to, to see the year out, oh, okay. right? There were two or three games left. It was kind of chalky. He's been there. Forever. Oh, that makes sense. He's yeah, been there weird. forever. Yeah, right? he was there since two thousand and seven. Yeah, so that's a long time. Right? Yeah, twelve years or something to to, to be a coach. They should have just seen, seen him through and then got rid of him. It's, but I supported getting rid because his it had gotten stale. Uh, right? I've never been <laughs> a big fan so of him. Stale. But it's just so easier to throw your coach under the bus in lieu yeah. of a player. Yeah, and, and that is so. I, I've been yeah. a, a part like I'm in hockey. I've been a huge Devils fan, yeah. and I've witnessed yeah. this happen. Like our coaches getting tossed mid season, yeah. go and be extremely successful with another team. You know, yeah. I'm referring to Peter DeBoer, who went from New Jersey to San Jose. Yeah. San Jose right. now appearing yeah. in many conference championships of a successful playoff team, and it's like, well, you know, realistically, the point of the problem is, you know, some maybe some players, maybe this, maybe that, and yeah. it's like it's so easy to just well, say, yeah, well, the coach is fired. It's easy to get rid. Of, <laughs> it's easy to get rid of a coach than it is to get rid of all those players. Yeah, yeah right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What's the general manager doing? What's the president doing? Yeah, right. The Canucks. I mean, I'm a I'm a Canuck fan, but I almost oh, you are. I'm right. almost ashamed to say it, but they're they're in complete disrepair because they just keep getting rid of. Right, the the top end guys year yeah. after year, and they don't really change. Yeah, don't really change a lot. Imagine if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan. Oh, how shitty man. would that be? Yeah, you right? draft the best player yet. in the you <laughs> da- draft player. the best player in the world. Draft a guy to compliment them, yeah. and then they, they, do they still suck. Uh, they, so they Leon Draisaitl yeah. and Connor McDavid both have a hundred points, and they missed which, the playoffs, and missed. they still missed the playoffs. Wow. It's By like, a ton. yeah, wow. it, it, it's right, like so what's it's wrong? Having like a Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin when those two guys yeah. came in the league, it's like the same thing. And those guys were hyper successful, went yeah. to back to back Stanley Cups yeah. against one, Detroit. One things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so yeah. it's like, what's going on That's here? Funny. Yeah. What uh, I wanted to go back to that uh, Patriots contract thing, and because um, I don't watch hockey. Okay, yeah, this but, isn't uh, important to me, guys. But the but the, <laughs> thing is, but the football thing is uh, when they take contract cuts, and um, I, when I think it's it's okay for them to get paid ridiculous amounts of money, is because I think um, I get scared when I watch football because I know it's just guys running into each other, and it's insane, it's an and insane it's madness. Physical support. Yeah. And yeah. so so when when it's teams that are like the Patriots that are like get rid of their all stars because they now deserve money, like say you're a middle linebacker who's kicking ass, who sacrifices their body a day in and day out for you. And I was like, look, I need some more money. And they're like, okay, bye. That's kind of terrible in a sense because well, these guys, ruthless. It's, ruthless. it's ruthless. These ruthless. guys need the money to take care of themselves down the road because they can't do this shit forever and they're going to feel the physical toll eventually. We've all seen concussion. It's scary. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's scary stuff but when it, it gets but, that but professional. It, 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 under, or not under my, it, it, it shows that it's a business. It's a right? business. Yes, it they're is a, there. It is a machine. There, it's it's a machine to make money. Yeah. Right. It's capitalism at its finest. They are they are they are making as much money as they can, and if if the expenditure is too much, done. 
And when I, when I think else. about that side of things, there's that's when I'm like, do I even want to watch this anymore? Yeah. Right? When I think about that, I don't want to watch yeah, this. Yeah, because I've kind of like turned into... I'll, uh, I'll never not watch it. Uh, I'm a, it right, know, but, that's, right? but that's the scary thing. It's so thing. goddamn entertaining, but yeah, when I'm is. watching it, I literally so feel like I'm soaked in this American McDonald's cheeseburger yeah. I feel like I'm watching the Gladiator fight. Yeah, you know... That's how I feel. It's really scary. And I love it too. And just to like, to take all that in and like... And then you go into your real world, and it's just like it's it's just overstimulating. It the is, NFL is. is just a crazy. Thr- I, I've I've been to two NFL games, one in San Diego, one in Seattle, and it's just it's the most amazing fan experience. Oh, and it's, I bet it's crazy. It's the tailgating, it's the people, and it's just yeah. the energy. It's the it's everything, right? And it's it, it's America. Yeah, it is America. I definitely want to go. Right? And and see you, it just, all. you just catch yourself watching, and you're like, "This is uh, you can't you can't take your eyes off." It's yeah. like being right? in the Coliseum. It is. It must just yeah. be just like yeah. that. It's and it, it is six foot five, three twenty guys just hammering on each other. Yeah, just right. Amazing. I mean, it's it's vicious. It's violent, and it's. It's, and it's fun. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do love, love it too. And I played it. And it's I, okay to love it though. I, yeah. I'm not trying to be like guilty. Like no, you shouldn't but, be guilty. It's like, <laughs> fuck yeah. I love but it. But I like to know what it is. I like to really like, cause it's, it feels like, yeah, like Roman Coliseum shit. And I feel like we're still that same human. That's what we're still doing in modern days. Are you not entertained? Not entertained? Yeah. Russell Wilson throwing the touchdown and looks at the crowd. That's, Are you not entertained? Well, maybe good. one day we'll get to that. <laughs> which would be dope. You watch basketball? Uh, How about those Raptors sucking? Uh, the Raptors suck. Can I just say that? They didn't win. Yeah. Last game they didn't win, they're done. Um, I watched. I watch a little bit of basketball. I find NBA basketball so slow and, and predictable. I can't talk about predictable. I, I can't. I'd ra- much rather watch college basketball. I agree. Watch, watch college football. I watched. There was the semifinal semifinals, and it was the game two of the seven series. And um, I only watched the last four minutes of the game. It took you twenty-seven minutes. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's see what's going on. Fourth quarter, Raptors. Let's yeah. see what we got. And for the entire time I watched, they didn't score a single point. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, they look like right. they look so shit. I was like, this is shit. I was getting so mad at my team and basketball in general. I'm like, what is going on? You guys are just gonna lose. The Golden State's gonna win again. And um, they looked like so bad the last three minutes. But when I looked at the highlights of the rest of the game, they were balling out. And I'm Fourth quarter, they were Kyle Lowry was five so for eight, bad. and then everyone else was zero for something. Made me not want to watch basketball ever again. <laughs> Here's a somewhat sports related thing. Um, <laughs> No, not basketball. Yeah, fuck basketball. I think we're all on the kind of <laughs> we're same done page. With, Raptors are done, we're done with that. The yeah. Raptors suck. Uh, <laughs> Smith, you're looking good. You have a busy schedule. Like, where's your work? Are, are you working out? Are you like when you get kids to do push-ups on the field? Do, do you, you get do down and do a few too? Like, uh, what's the deal? No, I. Um, you eating good? Eat fairly well. Yeah. Eat fairly well. Make decent lifestyle choices. Yeah. yeah Coach Stevenson I, teaching a leadership class. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, lo- I love I love that. Uh, no, I mean uh, my guys they work out with Prime. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Mondays and Fridays, cool. right? So that's awesome. We yeah. do this, we do this thing called Hell Week, three or four times a year. We Navy just, Seal. We, we beat the hell out of the kids at their at their facility. Yeah, cool. Uh, so I take part with them because I'm asking you guys to do it. I might as well do it too. Very oh, good right? leadership. Right? Yeah, that's uh, the way And then yeah, I, I just I use the gym. The, we got a Harewood gym by our school is retrofitted into a fitness space. So it's like it's two minutes from my house. I can jog there in five minutes. Is that the old jack? No, the the What's old that? the old Harrod School site on Howard and oh, that's Howard a gym. Fifth, that's a gym. So we are no way. Our academies use that. Our our PE classes so use. I've that. wondered for years right. what the hell is in that. Yeah, they, it, well, it was a gym. It when, was like, when, like when an empty Harrod gym, school. like a gym gym. Yeah, yeah gym gym. So oh, they okay. they've split the gym in half. So there's still a, a gym space. And then the the second half of it is we got squat racks, we got bench Sweet. press, we got free weights. Is it like an it's old awesome. school badass metal on metal kind of gym? Or There's what? definitely some of that. Yeah, definitely some of that. But but we're starting to put money into it, and we got we got some brand new squat racks cool. in there. That's um, exciting. It's, it's That's awesome. Cool. So I try to get in there. Is that at only least for ND? Two or three times a week. Yeah, it's ND. An ND yeah. thing because yeah. because they use the field right across the street from there all the time too. Yeah, our rugby team practices there when when somebody's on the field or there's a soccer match or something like that. Cool. But like the the gym at ND is. Is like a dungeon. It, oh, right. Really? Like, the kitchen that we're in right now—it's about half. The, it's twice the size of your kitchen, what? and it's dark. It's, it's dingy. <laughs> oh, just like weight room shit. It's it's just terrible. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. the weight room gym. So yeah. I yeah I try to I try to be as active as I can. Yeah. Right. Kind of a couple of years like hey I gotta like be healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No right? kidding. Right. So, so, well, it, it, it's it's funny. It's like hard to do when you have a crazy schedule with yeah. whatever you're doing, but. 
the payoff of it for your mental, for oh, your yeah. physical, yeah. for yeah. and it's how you'll huge. approach other tasks is yeah. just like yeah. you have to make time for uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. And especially when you're like, I don't know, you're like fifty or something, like you're getting up there. You know, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Teaching kids still in my thirties. Yeah, still in my thirties. Come on now, come on now. <laughs> it goes. I can't wait. Uh, my, my th- I'm gonna be my thirties in no time. It's crazy. Yeah, we were just talking about it. It's like we're gonna blink our eyes. And oh, totally. We're thirty. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm like we talked about earlier, right? I blink my eyes. My daughter's graduating. Right, got son going into grade ten next year. It's it's crazy. Right? Time, time, time flies, right? Mm-hmm. Just to think, you uh, you guys in high school, right? Playing you, intramural football against you guys, oh, right? Having a blast, so right? Going to watch you guys football. play in BC how, Place. How Have dare we? How dare you bring <laughs> up these wonderful memories? Oh my goodness! Right? And then all of a sudden, times times here. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, that's 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 really that's really interesting. That's a good yeah. perspective. Yeah. yeah, and it's something I've been taking away uh, over a conversation with a friend the last little bit. It's like. We as humans kind of get caught on this like never content and never like appreciating the now. And it's really as we reflect on all these memories, I'm sure like right now I constantly get in like, well, what's my next thing? What's my next chapter? What can I be doing? And it's like when you look back at what you're doing in life, podcasts like these, intramural football, it's really important to appreciate what you're doing in the now and the moment because the now and the moment is as good as anything. Good as anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you you can't enjoy and take a step back and go, hey, where am I? Right. Mm, grounded. I'm, I'm right here. Yeah. Right. I'm, That's you, got, you got to live for that moment. Yeah. And, and you, it you helps gotta, when you, you suffer a little it. bit. Oh, oh definitely. You can yeah. look back on the suffer. And I and I was gonna say, uh, it's good to teach those kids suffering through like working out yeah. as hard as they can. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. you can look back at like you really look back after you graduate and you're like, I fucking been through Hell Week at Prime with yeah. Smith. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I can get through. I can get through well, this I, shit. I had a couple guys last week. We were, or it wasn't last week. Shit, it was Friday. We were at Harrowwood and they were doing one of the rap. They were doing bench press and something. One of the kids like Smith. I couldn't do half this at the start of the year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just that simple shit. They were struggled. They couldn't do it. They felt down on themselves, but they just they persevere. Yeah. And now they're they're putting a plate or something on there, and they're and they're and they're going. Feels good. Right? Yeah, and they, yeah. they see the benefit. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's that's awesome. Confidence right? skyrockets. That's oh, at yeah. at such an uncertain yeah. time too. In a, an adolescence life, oh, like absolutely. when, when you're, so you're, 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 there's so yeah. much being thrown at you, and then and then like we're talking about with the phones and the culture and uh, and yeah. your video games and just all the stuff that's happening to you. It's totally. it's important to go out and experience the real world, yeah. gain yeah. some confidence yeah. with with some friends. Yeah, like I just man, I just love these programs yeah. so, so much. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, super it, important. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool what what kids are doing for themselves with each other right to, to just get better mm-hmm. to be better mm-hmm. right it's, it's cool. yeah it's a awesome i think we all need like a, a set of we want to feel what's the word we want to be uh masterful at something yeah and, and you're masterful at coaching kids and bruce is masterful yeah. at someone good <laughs> i'm not a male prostitute, not a male prostitute. By, <laughs> by the way i sell wood i'm sell not wood. a male prostitute yeah, 100% yeah. Wood. we just need something like that that we can fall back on and it makes us not feel so shitty <laughs> Selling wood. and That's sports great. is a good foundation for that oh it is yeah. yeah sports sports is a good foundation for life you teach kids so much about about life and, and how to succeed and how to work together and right and and, and plan and, and move forward and fail and move mm-hmm. forward right it's it's a microcosm for for your future yeah I think. absolutely yeah yeah. Wow. That's I can't, w- can't wait for the future. Yeah. No, no shots. We just talked about appreciating the now, damn it. <laughs> Come on, man. I also yeah. can't wait to do another podcast with you because this has been so much fun. Oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah. man. Enjoying this. This, this, is, this just is just a good. special thing. Like, yeah, we've talked about it on so many podcasts, but it was just, it was one of those ideas that was being thought of for so long yeah. and, uh, have you ever just like had an idea and then you finally pull the trigger on it and it's like, well, what was I doing during, totally. uh, during all this time? And yeah. th- this has been that kind of thing for yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, and it's just so much fun. Right now I'm living in Vancouver. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on moving back to the yeah. island. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, but, awesome. uh, and when I move back, uh, I've got a good thing going at my job right now. Things are going to be kind of grounded and more solidified for me. Uh, and Strats and I are just so excited for all the projects, but you know, we have the podcast, but we really want to get into shooting more stuff, filmmaking yeah. wise. And, cool. and yeah, know, we haven't what, been able to do an episode for a while because you've been up over there forever. And yeah. Just being selfish, doing this thing. Yeah. Being just selfish. Live, live, living in the now. What yeah. A yeah. What a yeah. piece. <laughs> yeah. But this isn't really even, this isn't even that fun to do by myself and like one other person. Like it's fun to do with me and Dana, but it's, it's much better. I like three person, like you're my co-host and it's just better that way. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. The, strat- yeah. the Stratocast. You guys, yeah. you guys got me. It, it's pretty when ridiculous. I think of Bruce, I think yeah. of Strats. When I think of Strats, I think of Bruce. Exactly. Oh, it's just, it's, the, way, it's, it's just the way it goes. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Yeah. No, it's cool to see from an outside, 
right? You meet people in the community that, that went to went to Barsby or I taught, right? Just mm-hmm. doing things. I mm-hmm. love seeing seeing people out doing what they love, right? Making a difference, growing, uh, experiencing their life. And right? you're one of the awesome. you're one of the guys that just awesome. supports that. Yeah, for, for everybody. That's of course. people feel that. I felt yeah. that. Yeah, that's and, cool. And to the opposite of that, and it's not like I'm calling any individuals out at all, but it's the opposite. It breaks my heart to see people doing nothing. Yeah, and yeah. you know, anytime like podcasts to me were a call to action. Yeah, because uh, you're listening to people, and it's not what they're talking about that's necessarily inspiring. Sometimes it's the person that's inspiring. Yeah. And, and you know, hearing a guy like Smith, uh, Smith talk about whatever, and maybe some friend that you went to high school with is gonna watch this podcast, and, and he's gonna get inspired by yeah. what you do. Or yeah. and, and it might cool. be, it might not be about the sports. It could be about when you talked about the books you were reading, and he yeah. likes to read too, and he hasn't been on that horse in a while. Wow, and I just, it's a, uh, it, it's a little universe inside itself totally. and, and it yeah. touches people in really special ways, man. And then yeah. I just, I love it so much. So when Strats picked it up, started the thing, it's just like, it, it's, I have no expectation for it. Like we were talking last night. I'm like, this thing could have 20 year views on YouTube. That's My right. heart is full. Totally. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. the special well, thing. Cause you're, you're not doing it for that. You're doing it for a different reason. I'm doing it for this. Right? Yeah. yeah. This, for this. this. Yeah. 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 And I'm happy to be a part of it. To be here to do this with you guys, right? Because you guys are so into this. Yeah. And it's it's just awesome. It makes me want to do it. Right? Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, awesome. We're gonna Cheers. wrap it up. My handshake <laughs> I had a good, good handshake for the good record. Handshake, you all good saw handshake. that. Bruce killed him. Yeah, salesman baby. Yeah. Good job. Oh wait, dude, we gotta get get back here. We gotta give him the guns. But you gotta give him the guns. What's the guns? Okay. All the guns. Yeah, we say give him the guns and then we give him the guns, guys. There it is. Thanks, guys. Like Another Stratocast in the books.